Hey guys, I am DM Zone. This is the Gamers Oasis. We're going to go over Baldur's Gate 3 Early Access. Both information and gameplay. One skull, two tenants, and no solution in sight. Okay guys, so I've gone over about 10 hours of video, different types of uh, gameplay, let's play, uh, reviews, panels from hell, everything. Um, and it's about 10 hours of raw content and i've tried i've worked into um what i hope to be a 20 minute video so i hope you guys appreciate that and uh yeah it's gonna be a lot of information given to you all at once i assume you've watched the video the trailer for this game if you have not i'll go ahead and link the video game trailer here the game starts out being captured by mind flares who are fleeing and crash their spacecraft in the first layer of hell the game does drop you in the middle of the blood war which is a benefit this is a war between devils and demons it also gives you cover and ability to move around without being necessarily detected the game's timeline starts just after the module descent into alvernus which is a dnd 5e supplement this descent into alvernus is about a city that was being named uh, beltron that was pulled into the first level of hell, Alvernus. There are a few ways that this module can end. Beltra comes back to the prime material plane of existence and ends up going back between Baldur's Gate and Ethel. As a capture E of a mind flare, you've had a tadpole dropped into your eye. As Sven says, this links people together and solves several problems. I will say that this is a good mechanic to build a team it gives it a direction, it, it connects people together with a common uh, problem or motivation. But as far as the other problems that it solves, I'll go more into that in videos I'm going to be doing. One of them will be called EA Character Creation uh, and EA Combat and Environment. Player choice is a major theme. Uh, do you tell the NPC to pound sand, do you kiss their... Uh, ring do you, or do you try and use a skill or a stat to solve a problem? Solving a problem this way can be a little bit of a risk. There's a lot of player choice with the tadpole as well. Do you embrace it? Do you reject it? Do you try and control it? Uh, do you try and use it for good? Depending on what you do, you'll get special powers. Some of these powers will be stronger, like if you were to embrace it. There are also several NPCs of note. There's a devil named Raphael and a goblin named Crusher. And you have a large amount of choice with these as well. Do you kiss the ring or do you fight them? Do you sell your soul? You know, the obvious choices. The game will be completely voice acted with players, NPCs, animals, and the dead being able to speak. Starting classes will be cleric, fighter, ranger, warlock, and the wizard. Starting races will be Dwarf and all of its subclasses, Elf and all of its subclasses, Kathanki, Drow, Humans, with the Half Drow, Half Elf, the Halfling, and the Tiefling. Both races and classes will be added, will be expanded upon and added to as the game goes forward through EA. There will also be, hopefully, classes or races like the Draconan and the Half Orc, and, you know, certain classes that we all know about but have not seen yet like the barbarian and bard and those type of things which are already represented in the game they're just not able to be played by the player they have added all sorts of things though along the way uh, prior to the release of ea one of the most recent additions was a piece of art that then became animated that in, that became interact that you be able to interact with and then eventually became a camp follower that would be the intellect the devourer this game is based upon divinity original sins 2. adam smith their senior writer loves goblin from time to time you will see a theme with goblins being used however this game is not limited to that this game is going to be a massive game stretching several planes of existence going to the Underdark and with creatures like owlbears and bullets, or the land shark, as they're more commonly known, being used throughout the game. There's also a Mikan city, and there are strange companions like the owlbear cub, and the ability to play 
uh, such creatures as vampire spawns. Level cap is going to be at 4 for EA, um, which opens up the ability to reach feats for most people and all the subclasses that are going to be available during EA. Overall, though, the level cap after EA should be 12. Known companions or the origin stories that they have at the beginning of EA are Wily, the Human Warlock, Shadowheart, the Dark Cleric, Asturian, a Vampire Spawn Rogue, uh, Lariel, uh, the Gethinky Dragon Rider, and Gale, the Human Evocation Wizard. Now, if I mispronounce any of those names, I apologize. But there are also other companions that have been hinted at, like the Owlbear Cub, which may or may not be able to be obtained in the beginning of the game, uh, a deep gnome by the name of Barkus Root, who you save during the EA portion of the game and then later meet up with in the, in the Underdark. He has a strange sense of honor, some might say. When multiplayer happens, it will come out with split screen. There's a lot of work still being done optimizing the game, trying to fix, complete the incomplete animations. There's a lot of deci decisions still being made, deciding how to deal with things like familiars without using standard leash type tropes and that type of stuff found in other games. There are things that are still being explored and being uh, organized, shall we say, like uh, the effects of speak with dead and speak with animal and all the Pandora's box that can open up when you start to go down that road. Near the end of the of some of the videos, they asked a bunch of questions. Uh, some of the things that Sven found to be very important, and Adam uh, Smith found to be very important, uh, was like a tabletop feel. They wanted it to feel like it was a game that could be played in your house. So they paid a lot of attention to the depth of the game, and the, the, there's a lot of first-time monsters that people sometimes use or talk about outside of games but haven't actually been found in role-playing games like the, the Intellect Devourer and becoming more and more famous ever since probably Will Wheaton had it on one of his uh, tabletop programs uh, with the Geek and Sundry, uh, the Albert. There are also iconic locations and characters that you'll find in this game. Some people ask, how can I help? Sven says the best way to help is play the game. They collect information when you click yes, saying yes, you will give information about how the game is working uh, during EA. Uh, they also suggest that you write your thoughts and on either the Steam or the Larian Studios forums. They, they will find them there. Also on many social medias, there's a chance they will find them there. Adam in particular said that he loves memes and tends to follow meme threads and that type of stuff. EA is continuously evolving this game and how it's going. New classes, races, locations will be unlocked during EA as the game progresses and they finish those areas or want to test those areas. Backgrounds are standardized. However, they aren't part of the dialogue options yet. Soon, they hope to be incorporated into the, the dialogue options. So, for example, if you have a noble background, you might have a noble reaction when talking to another noble. Or if you're speaking to an urchin, maybe you'll have a noble reaction as form of intimidation or something of that nature. Environmental interactions is considered to be a big part of this game. They want non-standard ways for the for creatures to be defeated. Uh, there are examples of people throwing boots or torches or that type of stuff as actual weapons. There are uh, objects that can be destroyed or augmented or dropped or caught on fire and different things happen. And these will have consequences that will actually change the environment itself, creating a hole in the ground or collapsing part of the wall. Um, those type of things so that uh, new areas can be accessed, back doors can be found, or creatures that are impossible to kill by the normal player's ability can actually be killed. There'll be a ton of changes before what uh, Sven calls 1.0, which would be the actual release of the game. So keep checking back with me here on my channel or go to Illyria Studios and you can find the updates as they go. I will be posting 
uh, videos to every one of their updates talking about the changes in the game and how things are going and what my opinion of the game is at this point in time. If there's anything else you guys would like to know about, please let me know. I do have a plan to talk about combat and environment and to talk about uh, player races and classes and to kind of go over that in two additional videos prior to the EA release. Once the EA's release happens, I'm going to be doing uh, character class breakdowns and a bunch of videos like that, as well as play th uh, playthroughs and that type of stuff, specifically targeting good alignments, evil alignments, chaotic environments, lawful environments, alignments, excuse me, not environments. But also, you know, uh, I want to try some of the player choice stuff. So I'm going to be doing some stuff apparently on Twitch so that I can uh, see how that works out too. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this video. If there's anything else you want or anything else that you, I feel like I've left out, please let me know down in the comments and I'll try and do the best to cover it in my next update video. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you and have a great day. Bye.